Duck Fresh, the PCGYN with Computer Care Clinic's tip of the day. Today we're going to unbox and install a solid state hard drive. We're going to get away from moving parts and go into the new solid state technology. It's supposed to be faster and supposedly more uh, reliable because there's no moving parts. Now the flash memory used in these hard drive hard drives actually burn pits into uh, the substance, whatever they're using in these things, and uh, they're so fairly new that we don't have any reliability estimates on them yet. Now, they've done tests in the manufacturer's labs and say these things will run for a million or so rewrites, and nobody's quite sure how long a million rewrites takes. It really depends on your individual usage. So what we've got here is a, a uh, Vertex 4. 128 gigabyte, pretty sizable, uh, solid state hard drive. They come in a two and a half inch uh, form factor, which is the laptop form factor. But uh, most of these come in kits, uh, including this one from OCC, which has a mounting bracket uh, adjustment for uh, desktop installation. We're going to do one on a desktop today. So let's take a look and see what we got and uh, see if we run into any pitfalls or any weirdness. And uh, let's install us a solid state hard drive. Come with me. So we finally managed to get the shrink wrap off this thing, and that's always a daunting task. And uh, what we found is a nice little self-promotional sticker saying, My SSD is faster than your HDD. Whatever. Some uh, instructions here that are too small to be read by human eyes without a microscope. And we get to the hard drive itself, which is nestled into this nice little foam packaging here. And it's about the same size as a notebook hard drive. This is a desktop hard drive. You can see the difference in size here. And on the back of this doodad, we have the uh, mounting bracket, which the hard drive screws into the bottom of this guy, and then uh, this screws into the uh, normal bracket of the uh, computer we're going to put it in, which is right about there. So that should fit in there nicely. So uh, let's take her apart and uh, see what we got. We've got to screw the hard drive in the mounting bracket using these tiny little screws, and very, very difficult to get in there. And then when you flip it over, you see it has a normal serial ATA connection. And also, you got a little bit of advertising here. Maybe that's backwards. It shouldn't matter. You should be able to flip them each way. So there it is, installed in the computer. We've got it screwed in through the little supplied mounting screws. And it's just a regular serial ATA interface. We're going to connect her up to the motherboard. And uh, I've disconnected the regular drive so it doesn't mistake that one as the boot drive. And uh, we'll reconnect that as a slave later. Yeah. All right, it's the moment of truth. Let's fire it up and see what happens. Hopefully the BIOS will recognize it as a regular old serial ATA drive. Let's jump in there and see what happens. Well, there it is. Plain old serial ATA drive. Hopefully the operating system installation will be this easy. Let's take a look. So he's got a his COA on his box for Windows XP Professional, and he wants to go with XP. <laughs> it's so 2000 and late. And uh, it looks like she's uh, booting right up. That's good news. We'll see what happens, see if it can find the drive, and uh, we'll take a look at our formatting options. Sure helps if you have a truckload of memory. I think this game's got four gigs, which isn't really a truckload, but it's more than average. So here we are at the uh, Windows XP Pro setup screen, and uh, this is a uh, OEM Service Pack 3 disc, which has serial ATA drivers embedded. So if you use an old one, you could run into some problems. Let's see what happens here. Eight, and there it is. It found the 128 gigabyte, about 128, and I'm going to hit enter. I'm going to do a quick format. And there it is. Flawless. So it's rolling right through. Let's see how fast it... Well, the quick format should be pretty fast. But I'll keep an eye on how fast this thing goes to see if I can notice any difference in speed between a conventional platter drive and a solid-state drive. And I'll report back in a few. So there it is. Windows XP Professional on a solid-state hard drive. Nothing up my sleeve. It's the only one connected in here. You can see that the regular SATA drive is disconnected and this one's plugged in. No special BIOS adjustments, nothing to uh, format the hard drive. It just went through a traditional Windows XP format. And this is the worst case scenario. Anything uh, Vista and forward is going to be totally compatible with this hardware. Uh, 
Probably even Windows 8, but I haven't tried one of those yet. I don't have the guts. <laughs> so uh, that's it. Solid state hard drive seems pretty flawless. Uh, I'm going to poke around, try the speed, see if I can notice a difference. This computer is going to be used for audio editing, so uh, this user will probably notice a big difference in performance. So, Chuck Fresh, the PCGYN. This is Computer Care Clinic's tip of the day.